The Giants would have win purely off the defense, guys. Oh my god, the Philadelphia trash bags come into town and play the New York Giants. And from jump, we shut them out in the first half. Jalen Hurts had two interceptions in the first half. And we took care of business. We were the first team to shut out Philadelphia in the first half in 45 games. That's since 2018, bro. That is a lot of time. That's a long time ago, and things were looking real good. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to the offense because this dominant performance by the defense, and that's what it was, a dominant performance by the defense. They had their mistakes. They couldn't stop Philadelphia's run game, which is something to talk about, whether it was the, uh, the read option with Jalen Hurts or just them running with Boston Scott and Miles Sanders. But Boston Scott, who continues to look like Barry Sanders whenever he plays the Giants, this was a dominant performance by the defense. We're playing a Philadelphia team whose offense is top 10 in the league. I think they're currently ranked the seventh overall offense. And in the past two weeks, they've been the best offense in the league. Two weeks ago, they scored 30 points. One week ago, they scored 40 points. Our defense held them to seven points. Just looking at production, that's a dominant performance. Shout out to my guy Philly Notion, a Philly content creator. I was in a stream with him last night, or he came onto my stream. I told him Philadelphia is not scoring more than 25 points in, in the game. Philly Notion said I was wrong, that they're going to drop 30 on us. Evidently, we were both wrong because they only scored seven. <laughs> seven points. It's two turnovers in the first half, which was the two interceptions. I believe we had three turnovers in the second half. I think one of them was a turnover on down, another interception, and then a fumble recovery. So we had an interception by... Um, by Darnay Holmes was the first one, and unfortunately, Darnay Holmes went out with an injury. We'll have to see how that goes. So did Adoree Jackson. Then we got an uh, a interception by Tay Crowder on a great play where he kind of pushed uh, the guy who was on a little bit. And this, this was like right in the end zone, in the red zone type of thing. Interception. And then we got an interception by Xavier McKinney. And can I just talk about Xavier McKinney for a second? There's only about like four players that I really, really love on the Giants right now. And all four of them are first and second round picks from the past two years. Andrew Thomas, first round pick in 2020. Xavier McKinney, second round pick in 2020. Uh, Kadarius Tony, first round pick in 2021. Aziz Ojolari, second round pick in 2021. Xavier McKinney, when we drafted this guy back in 2020, he was just like Andrew Thomas was going into the draft process regarded as the best at his position in the draft. Now, there were other players right there with him that, you know, people were kind of debating, tossing up. Could they be better? And I, you guys already know me, I was always a believer in Andrew Thomas that he was the best out of that draft class. And in my opinion, he's proven it this year, more so than he did last year. He's uh, had kind of a breakout year, so to speak, this year. And I had the same feeling with Xavier McKinney. Now, Antoine Winfield Jr. had an amazing rookie year, the safety for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But much like how Tristan Wirfs, the right tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, has a lot of help on his line, uh, you know, Antoine Winfield has a lot of help on his defense. Xavier McKinney was injured for the majority of his rookie year. And then the entirety of his second year right now, he's shown out. I think he's been better. I think he's the, I still think he's the best safety out of the 2020 draft class. And he's looking like one of the best safeties in the league right now. If I can just quickly pull up his stats, I'm pretty sure he's, he's either tied like third or fourth in the league for, um, for interceptions. Cause he has five on the year now, right? It has to be five or six or something. Can I count? So he had one today and then he had, yeah, he had four on the year before that. So he has five interceptions right now that should be tied second or third in the league. And that's as a safety. That's as a guy that coming out wasn't necessarily known for his coverage skills. He was known more for his tackling skills and he's really evolved and progressed extremely well. And I really, really like where he's headed with this Giants defense. This entire defense had a great game. Yes, they could not stop the run, and they looked terrible in tackling. I, I, they frustrated me a couple times during this game, made me want to pull my hair out. But results are results. You held the offense that on average was putting up 35 points in the past two weeks to seven. You made Jalen Hurts turn the ball over four or five times. What more can you ask for? The offense, I mean the defense is amazing. I might have said offense a couple of times. The defense is amazing the reason i might have said offense is because they've been on my mind don't let this game and this win distract you from the fact that this offense is still terrible still trash 
basura, garbage, whatever adjective you want to use to describe it. It is terrible. Freddie Kitchens didn't look like much of a difference to Jason Garrett if we're talking about pure results. Three points after the first half, 13 points after an entire game. Um, his play calling was a bit different. We saw a little bit more creativity, especially early on in the game with that um that uh that flea flicker that turned into a tight end screen. That was pretty cool. But like at the end of the day, we saw a lot of the same mistakes uh that Jason Garrett was making with play calling, not calling um like on third and longs, plays that develop past the sticks. When we had that terrible in the third quarter, that terrible drive, probably the worst drive all year. No, not probably, definitely the worst drive all year. First and 10 turns into a second and 23. And then you run the ball. That second and 23 turns into a third and 23. And you run the ball on third and 23. Stupid, stupid and terrible play calling by Freddie Kitchens. Like I said, he's his the way his, you know, the way he called the plays and what we saw on the field was a bit different. But the end result was much of the same. Moving the ball in between moving the ball in between the 20s, but just not scoring at all. Um, my Alexa went off. I don't think I could edit that out. It is what it is. You guys, you guys got that. But uh, Daniel Jones as well. Very, I'm very 50-50 with him right now. I saw a lot of things that we've been asking to see all year. Stepping up into the pocket, knowing when to scramble, especially in the first half. That was, that was good. It seemed like he forgot how to step up in the pocket and, and scramble a couple times. There was a there was a couple times where I saw him make his reads and make good decisions, especially to the, the second Chris Myrick catch. Myrick actually fell down and got back up, and DJ got it off to him. But then there's also times where I still see him staring down his receivers and, and things like that. So very 50-50 with Daniel Jones. He wasn't the best, but he wasn't you know the worst either. And we finally targeted Kenny Galladay, which is a combination of the coordinator Kitchens and the quarterback Jones. We targeted him at least seven times this game, I believe. Uh, a couple of times, Galladay should have came down with the ball and he didn't. And a couple of times, Jones should have made a better throw and he didn't. Combination of basically what we've seen all year, right? But a win is a win and I'm not sure. We are 4-7 and seven now. I'm not talking about playoff hopes for a long time. Because we're playing the Dolphins next week who have quietly won four games in a row. They're 5-7, and seven, I believe. Um, it's not going to be easy. This defense can perform like an all-world defense, which it looked like today, because don't sleep on Philadelphia's offense. It performed amazingly. But we see if this offense still performs like the worst in the league, which it, make no mistake, the Giants offense has got to be the worst in the league. There's only so much the defense can do. You think there's going to be another game where they get a turnover basically every time we need a turnover? That was a near-perfect game turnover-wise from the defense. That's not going to happen that often. We're going to need the offense to step up. We're going to need... Daniel Jones to step up, Freddie Kitchens to step up, Kenny Gaudet to step up, and Saquon Barkley to step up, who also kind of disappointed me today again as well. He had one good run, and that's about it. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.